Now that we have this gun here, we need to work on the logic for shooting some bullets. So, so far we've been using things already provided by Unity. We made game objects, we had a directional light, we've used the first person character, we've used some cubes to design this gun, but we don't have something specifically set to make uh, the logic for shooting, okay, that doesn't exist yet, so we have to make our own logic. To do that, we have to make some scripts. We're going to need a script for the player and a script for uh, shooting bullets. But you might ask yourself, hey, we already have a script here. We have the first person controller. So we can just open the script and then change it. Don't do that. Okay, It's very important for you to understand that. This script is only for the movement and for the physics of the first person controller. There's nothing related to shooting here. Yes, you could change that, it would work the same way, but it's better to have our own script that is going to do other things, okay, besides movement. It's not going to work with movement. So, to make a new script, we're going to the project folder. We already have materials and scenes, but now we right-click, choose create, then folder, and this one is going to be named scripts. Simple as that. And inside this folder, we're going to make two files. So, right-click, create, C-sharp script, this is going to be player or hero, whatever name you want to use. I tend to use player because that's pretty much the full on the entire, uh, well, millions of games that you can make. Okay, we always have a player. And now we right click, create C sharp script, and I'm going to name this one as bullet. And then hit enter. So every time you make a script, there's this little spinning wheel here to say that the code is compiling. And after that's done, we can already work on using this script. So before you enter the script, it is important to remember to add it to the scene, to add it as a component to the player. So make sure you have the player selected in the hierarchy. And you can select the player script, drag and drop it either like this in the player or dragging it and dropping it here. I prefer this one because it's just faster, but make sure you have the player selected. Okay, so we have the player script and that is going to basically, it's guaranteed that that script is going to load. Now I'm going to double click the player script and you have to wait a little bit for MonoDevelop to open, but well, it already comes bundled with Unity if you haven't changed anything in the, in the installation process. Okay, and we have that empty class here. So the first thing that we want to do is to understand when are when should we shoot bullets, okay? And we have two methods here. We have start and we have update. And for clicking in Unity, we should use the update method. Since this is called on every frame, on every time your game is processed by the device it's being uh, ran, okay? So if it's in, in a smartphone, in a smart TV, whatever target platform you have, the update method is going to call once per frame. And this is the perfect moment that we can use to check if we are clicking, okay? So we want to, to listen for the click for in the left mouse button, okay? So a basic left click. And to do that, we need to use an if block. So we're going to type if, open and close parentheses and the curly braces. And to ask if we are pressing the mouse button, we're going to type input to access the input class, the input system, dot get mouse button. And you notice that there are two, three options actually. Get mouse button is going to return true at every moment, every time, every frame, the given mouse button is held down. So this is used for machine guns, for example, because if you hold down the trigger, then it's going to shoot bullets, several bullets, okay, dozens of them at every second. However, for pistols, that's not how it should work. We should use get mouse button down because that's not an, aut an automatic weapon. You shoot one bullet for every time you press the trigger. So if you press the trigger, you have to release it and press it again, okay? That's how, how basically pistols that are not automatic work. So if you look at the summary here in Mono Develop, it says return true during the frame the user pressed the given mouse button. This is very important. Since we are using this in the update method, it's basically going to work. So get mouse button down. Now we're going to pass the button that we want to use. I'm going to pass 0 for the left mouse button, but you can use 1 or 2 for the right and middle mouse buttons. And just to see if this is working, we're going to print a message here. So I'm going to type debug.log, okay, so we can print a message in the user's console. And I'm going to pass uh, between quotes the message fire. Now we're going to save the script, 
go back to Unity and wait for that script to be processed. And after this is done, I'm going to press play. So the player is going to be back in the scene, we can move around. And if I click, you're going to see that a message printed here, fire. Okay. If you click, it's going to be highlighted in the console window, which is right here. Okay. So we can, if you click several times, we're going to see the fire message. So great. We already know how to, to listen for the left mouse button press. Now we have to actually shoot the bullets. And how do we do this? Uh, bullets, they work a bit differently than some elements that we have here. We designed the gun, but how the game is, is working right now is we just have one gun. Okay, there is no need to, to transform that gun into something that can be reused later. But that doesn't apply for bullets, because bullets, they appear all the time. Okay, we need to make a, a system here where a bullet can be instantiated okay, dynamically in the game, and then we take it off. Okay, so how do we do this? How do we make that work? We have to go here to so our hierarchy, and we have to make one bullet. So in the game controller, I'm going to right click, choose create empty, and I'm going to rename this game object as bullet. Okay, it's going to be in the position 000, but let's bring it in front of the weapon so we can see it once we design it. All right, and inside that bullet, which is in this position, I'm going to right click, choose create empty, and I'm going to rename this game object to model. And then you might think, hey, we have something different now. At the player, we made a gun, and that gun already have the cube elements. But why do we have the model here? This is a tip that I'm giving to you, because sometimes you need an intermediate game object before you add the visual elements, just like we have with the first person controller. We have the, 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 the main object, and we have the first person character. It's important to have this, because if you want to make a, a ninja game, for example, where you have shurikens, you want to rotate the model. Okay, we just want to rotate the visual part of the bullet. And if you don't do this, if you try to rotate the bullet, depending on the technique that you're using to make that bullet to move forward, to whatever direction you're shooting it, then it's not going to work. So it's important to separate logic, okay, the logic part, the code part, from the visual part. That's why we add this little model element here. You can also name this container if you want. Okay, both work just fine. Let's use container. Now I'm going to right click, choose 3D object and then sphere. So you have this huge sphere in front of the weapon. I'm going to start by removing the sphere collider. Okay, it's not going to be present here. You're going to understand why. And scale is going to be 0 0.3, I think. Yes, 0 0.3 looks perfect. It's going to be 0 0.3. And we want to change its color as well. So we go to our materials folder, right click, create, material bullet. And I'm going to change the color to yellow, so it's very easy to spot in the game. And I'm going to drag and drop here. And if you want to change the color and, and test it right in the game, you can just click here, basically, and, and change to whatever color you want. You will see the results immediately here. Okay, so why did I remove this collider from the bullet? Okay, you might under know that colliders are used for basically processing collisions to see if one object is overlapping another or if there's a physical collision between them. I took it off from here because this is not where the collisions are going to be processed. It should be processed in the bullet game object, okay? Remember, this is the logical part and this is the visual part. So in the bullet, we need uh, to add the bullet script to it. So we already made that. I'm simply going to drag and drop to the bullet here or here. We already have it, the script's here. Nothing special, but it's going to work. And now I'm going to click on Add Component, and we can add either a box collider or a sphere collider. So if you click on Add Component, you have that search field. You just type sphere, and we already have sphere collider. If you look at the scene window, it's a bit bigger than the bullet. So let's change that radius to 0 0.2. It's OK to make it bigger than the, the actual sphere, because let's be a Let's forgive the player a little bit if they miss a shot. It's important to have that little uh, tolerance, okay? So the player doesn't get frustrated for missing a shot. But it's really up to you. If you want to change that to something like 1.5, so it's going to be precisely the size of the bullet, it's going to work. But I like to add a little tolerance. Now, this bullet is not going to behave uh, completely in a completely real physical way, okay? We're not going to shoot it and if it hits the floor it's going to bounce and roll around. 
we want to keep things simple. Okay, sometimes you have to simplify things so you're going to make sure that your game is going to behave very well. And because of that, I'm going to mark this is triggered checkbox. Okay, so we are just going to use the bullet for checking for overlaps. So basically, the bullet's going to go through elements. It's going to go through the floor if you shoot looking at the floor. It's going to go through the enemy. However, if it goes through the enemy, it's going to hurt it or kill it. Okay, so let's use this is trigger checkbox here. All right, so we have the bullet, we have the sphere collider, and now that we have this, we want to transform this bullet into something that can be reused later. In Unity, that's called making a prefab, okay? It's just like the name says, something that has been previously fabricated, something that has been previously made for us to reuse later. Since we're going to make use of several different bullets, it's interesting that it is a prefab. So what we're going to do is, we're going to the project folder, we're going to right click and create a new folder that is going to be named prefabs, like this. And now we're going to select this bullet and we're going to drag and drop to the prefabs folder. Okay, and we're going to have the bullet here. If you look at the hierarchy, it's written in blue. Okay, it's something very simple, just written in blue because it means this is a prefab instance. It's a copy of the original prefab, which is this one. And if you want, you can even delete it from the scene because it's already saved. You can just drag and drop again, it's going to be back. Now we're going to save our scene and we have to work on making this bullet appear.